it's your girl Jasmine really gonna be doing the video that's income how I got my internship how this girl from the lower west side of Chicago was able to get an internship with one of the top tech companies in the world and go through some lessons that I learned after that whole experience I want to kind of talk to the students or you know my fellow colleagues right now they're having a difficult time finding a job or um, their internship was turned virtual myself included i'm definitely going to be working home probably until the end of the year um, but i want to reflect on the lessons i learned and kind of talk about how they're applicable now oh so we're gonna go straight to it first uh before you even try to get an internship or a job whatever you're going through right now you kind of have to like start backwards and see what you have at the moment. I was a junior at UIC, University of Illinois at Chicago, uh, studying marketing and finance. You know, being a business major, and one of the things that they pound into your head is to always have an internship. And you don't have to, you don't have, to have as many as I did, but it is very important, whatever job experience you do have, be able to apply them to new uh, jobs that you're looking for. Last year when I was applying for internships, I can say, okay, I was freaking stressed. It was just constant anxiety for me. Uh, and let me say something about the job process right now. No different last year. It was very competitive. I was applying left and right to all these companies and your girl was getting rejected. I applied to United Airlines um, to be a marketing intern. <laughs> Happy that didn't work out. Uh, also getting mad rejected from a lot of marketing agencies. Uh, and I'm saying this because of course everybody tells you like you need to be ready to be rejected a lot of the times and you cannot let that stop you from applying to maybe somewhere better you know I was at a point where I was very devastated <laughs> every company was denying me and then one day in my finance class I couldn't pay attention to my professor because I was just so preoccupied thinking about this internship I needed to land in order to get my dream career. I'm over here thinking if I don't get this job, I'm gonna be dying in a ditch next. I Google top paying uh, companies, of course tech companies came up. Microsoft, Facebook, um, Apple. And I remember seeing Microsoft in one of the conferences I went to. But at the time, I was part of Alpha, which is the Association of Latino Professionals for America, such a great organization. You definitely try to join a organization that pertains to your career, but also maybe to your ethnicity. They were very tailored to Latinos. So a lot of the conferences we went to were very much recruiting Latinos. So I remember Microsoft being there. Like I'm gonna do it, like whatever. I've been rejected left and right. So what? if I get rejected by this company, it's not gonna hurt as much. Apply to Microsoft by the end of that class period in finance. Uh, university marketing intern. And a few days later, to my surprise, I got an email from Microsoft saying that they wanted to continue on with my application process. I was stunned. What? I was like, I had to look back at my resume and be like, what the hell did I put in there? Like that I worked for this company, but not literally everybody else. Some things will stick out to some companies and some things won't. Quick tips that I did do, I made sure that a lot of the key words or um, verbs that were stated in the description of the internship at Microsoft were in my resume. So a lot of recruiters are not reading your resume. A computer reads your resume and there's an algorithm that's reading your resume and seeing if this person includes keywords that they're looking for and then after that that's when hiring managers will probably look at your resume this is another tip a lot of these things will have a ton of qualifications probably things that you're like wow i don't have or who has like four years of marketing experience when they're a junior in college like and that's okay, still apply to them. People don't have that. It's kind of just to weed out the people who won't even apply, you know? So if you don't have, for example, and I've seen some job postings like this, 
have four years of marketing experience or four years of this or that or whatever like and but you have two or you have three of something else that you could be applicable and put those traits in like still apply what it is really gonna happen you get rejected well guess what if you don't apply you're a hundred percent not getting the jobs the aspire program is the program that i'm part of that i applied to and kind of got in so it's for undergrads and then also mba students you're in in the u.s subsidiary of microsoft in marketing and operations so essentially at first it was a phone interview and i was able to schedule it online uh, they kind of gave me a time frame so they gave me within three weeks i would suggest going first if you feel comfortable of course if you're packed that weekend you don't even have time to get i don't i mean research the company probably don't do that and then leading up to the interview i researched the heck out of microsoft because like i said i wasn't very familiar other than obviously using office there's a lot of business research databases that you can go on if you're a student um, if you're not a student, you can definitely like probably just look it up on the company. Databases will have summaries or also current events that they're going through. So basically, it's just a ton of information on the company you're interviewing with. Use that. And I was basically reading through all of it on Microsoft. They didn't really tell me what the interviews would be about. Like I was kind of guessing here. That's why I'm hoping that this video kind of helps out. And like I mentioned, my interviews they were pretty different than other people's interviews and for a marketing student a lot of the times they would give you business cases or yeah business studies and you basically have an hour for you to decode this either financial or marketing problem that they give you and you're supposed to analyze it talk about it within an hour and give your recommendations to a couple people who are interviewing you with you this interview was chill it was very behavioral and it was very conversational which i love i was talking to him and i'm over here ready to like answer any marketing question he throws at me uh but it was very conversational he was asking me how was school going like what was my favorite subject in marketing or like why was i interested in microsoft I love those interviews because they really show that they care about you as a person and not just what you can do at that moment because a lot of the times in your job function you're not gonna know exactly what you're doing that's what trainings for of course they'll see if you're qualified through your resume but I love when they take the time to really get to know you in the interview so I'm so you're basically talking about yourself for 30 minutes 20 minutes trying to just go through your resume and if they have any questions then they'll ask you but things he really did throw at me was how I would go about marketing for Apple if I if I worked for them which I think he was trying to throw me off by the fact that he was asking me if I was working for Apple another thing he also asked me was what's my favorite product he's always so much better to be over prepared than under prepared because I mean, what if he did have thrown me like 20 different marketing questions about Microsoft? Like I would have been okay with it, but still like you have to be prepared for anything. Um, so that was my interview. And a week later, I was chosen to go and fly out to Seattle for my final round of interviews. And guys, when I thought, I thought I was stunned the first time, but gosh, I was like, what you like, hey girl, you're gonna fly out to Seattle and you're gonna like do all this. I was just going through this phase, so it was really hard for me to like be excited. I, I was scared out of my mind. It occurred to me that I'm very, very blessed to have two parents who have always been there for me, still to this day have been there for me. They I asked them if they wanted to come with me to Seattle to, you know, have my support system with me because like I mentioned, I was scared as hell and I kind of just wanted to show them what, what was going on because when you tell your first generation parents that, hey, so you know, like, I'm going to go have an interview in Seattle for an uh, internship. They looked at me like I was crazy. They're like, what the hell is an internship? What? Why are you moving? Like, 
are you I thought <laughs> I thought you're still in college like what's going on so I figured a lot of these questions could be answered by having them with me so we flew out there and then the next day we had the morning we did a little touristy stuff I mean might as well take advantage of it we're gonna be under stress and then my parents were able to drop me off the interviews were at the recruiting center at the Microsoft campus in Redmond when I walked in to the recruiting center it was just bussing it was bussing with so many hopeful candidates and if they gave you a star and the star had a color on it and depending on the color that you had kind of identified what group or program that you're applying to and I met this guy who had the same color star as me wherever you go you never know when you're gonna meet someone who's gonna be with you through beginning to the end so I started talking to Mike and he still is one of the coolest people I met at Microsoft it's nice to have at least someone that you could always refer back to and be like hey did you get a call yet <laughs> uh, recruiters come in they tell you hey you're gonna have a few different rounds of interviews they section you off based on the program that you're applying to in total it was around three hours that i was interviewing after every interview they would put us back into the room and then until the next person was ready so that's kind of how it worked and i met with three different people they were very similar to the phone interview meaning they were very behavioral and then they were very com conversational if anything i would say they were just more conversational it's on these type of interviews i would say be very clear be exciting be happy that you're there like a lot of these interviews it's very expressional and, but you need to be somewhat animated and i know not everyone has this personality so i don't want you to fake it either because it's very noticeable when someone's faking their enthusiasm I want you to bring it out of yourself. Things in your resume that you remember, that you have really good stories that you can tell on your leadership, on your multitasking, whatever the job description is, you want to be able to highlight that, not just in your current position, but also in the ones previous. So another thing is you have to have your resume like memorized, like because most of the time they're reading it, in, like they're looking at it in front of you. So you, you can't be messing up about your own experiences, you know, unless what's preferred is that if you have a resume as well, a copy for yourself. And for the love of God, do not read your resume in front of them. The point is, like I said, is to take highlights of different positions and apply them to how you can be awesome in your current and the one that you're applying to. Always ask questions at the end. The greatest outcome is that you actually move away from your experience and you start getting very personal know with these people because they are your team they are will hopefully be your teammates so the hope is that you from the get can get on a personal level with them that's when you know the interview is doing well of course make sure that the experience and your enthusiasm getting that position is first and foremost and then it's everything else it's the rest is kind of the cherry on the top know, know what your elevator pitch is in the sense that you are able to clearly identify what you want in that certain position and what you're striving to do in a few years the common questions they did ask me was where do you see yourself in five years and still am <laughs> very interested in product development and innovation and I was looking for a marketing position that would allow me to be very close to a product and be able to create marketing strategies for that product to drive sales, to drive action and customers for that product. The ultimate goal was to be part of a product development team in the future. That is so much more like understandable versus if i had told them you know yeah i just i really love marketing and i love everything about it yeah in five years i wanna you know just go up to higher management like which one is more of a punch it's like the one that i'm more specific on only because i was super interested in product development and marketing in that specific section didn't mean I didn't tell them that I was also really great at photography. I like taking videos, that I do this and that because then you become a team. They're focused on one thing, but they reach out their arms and they reach to the right, to the side. So 
know about social media. I know about uh, different marketing strategies. You have these different experiences that you're able to uh, reach left and right to for your kind of focus, which would be the one you're going on. And even if you don't know 100% confident about what you actually want to do, because in that sense, they can kind of place you where you fit best. Truly don't care, like you're just happy you're there, like still tell them something because it shows initiative, it shows that you clearly know what you want, and it shows some type of leadership and communication that, you know, you are actually very knowledgeable about this industry that you at my last interview i was talking to this woman i felt like i didn't deserve to be there and i was freaking out like she was remarkable guys like she helped get her sector go over a, a billion dollars twice traveled the entire world like with microsoft helping different teams reach their goals i literally still like phased out for a bit and stopped listening to her because i think i was starting to get dizzy but that is what we call imposter syndrome and you cannot let that bitch in you cannot let her or him get the best of you because like you just you break down all that time and effort you put in years to get up into this point you forget about it you know and i totally did like i put in work i put in work in my classes and in that second i felt like none of it mattered because i still didn't deserve to be there and you just need to reassure yourself that you're there for a good reason and she i think she kind of noticed that i was freaking out a little bit and she asked me if i had any questions i had asked her a question about the culture at microsoft you know her response was so great she was very encouraging i've always felt very much supported there's so many opportunities here i felt like at that sense she was trying to convince me to work at microsoft it wasn't even like she was interviewing me she was like this company will like skyrocket you personally and professionally and that's all i really needed to hear and i was like wow where do i sign my contract who are having virtual interviews it's the same thing guys it's the same thing as if you were there in person just that you're not you're in between screens you still your words will still come across so don't think that the screen will not push the words that you need out they will if you allow them to so like i said be very personable be very clear about what you want from the experience what you want in the future be able to go through your resume and highlight the things that are very important that they might overlook or that you have really good stories on that will highlight your uh potential in that position ask questions to them like be very happy that you're having this conversation that in itself is such a good like sales marketing technique with people like if you're generally happy to talk to them that already elevates you because a lot of people believe it or not are not good at having interviews like that they look like they'd rather die and <laughs> you don't want to be like that i've had a few virtual interviews too and like i said i felt like they were exactly the same as if they were in person they're just not in person do research on the interviews that would actually pertain to your position like i mentioned my interviews may differ a lot from and i know for a fact differed a lot from the computer science people um if you have any more questions let me know in the comments i'll be sure to answer them <laughs>